Okay, can everyone see my screen okay? We can, yes, I can. So there is a bit of background stuff in here. So I'm, I'm happy to share these slides just in case, um, I, obviously I didn't know what the, the girls have been told about engineering. Um, so there's a, a few sort of filler slides in here, but obviously we can share those. So yeah, brilliant. Um, so Leticia, I don't know how much you know about um, engineering, but basically everything around you, it has some form of, of engineering involved in it. Um, you know, from your smartphone down to your, your Fitbit, um, your shoes, your makeup, absolutely everything has some form of, of engineering involved in it. So um, basically it, it's taking ideas and turning things into reality. Um, engineering is a really creative area to get involved in. And there's, it, it's, it's basically about solving problems and working as part of a team to, to do that. Um, the main areas that most engineers come from is a background in science and maths. But that's not always the case. Um, so what is an engineer? What areas do we work in? So um, I myself over my career has, have worked in defence, electronics, rail, um, aerospace. Um, again, there's some lots of things listed there and just some ideas of how engineers actually um, come. Uh, one of obviously the big things to do with the coronavirus is there's been a lot of engineers involved in solving the, the problems that we've, we've seen. Um, there's a list here again of, of types of engineers I've already mentioned. Uh, the main areas that I've worked in uh, around the electrical and electronic sides, computer and IT, but again I've worked with many mechanical engineers, chemical engineers. Um, I'm probably talking really fast because I tend to, so please just tell me to slow down. <laughs> so who am I? So I grew up in a very small town, which is uh, just the other side of Bath. Um, it wasn't particularly the done thing from my school that people even went to university. Um, I enjoyed maths and science, but had absolutely no idea what you did with those subjects. Um, and I liked solving problems. The careers advice I had at school was actually none. But I tell a lie, there was an online quiz that told me I was going to be a prison officer, I think, at the end of it. Um, I always knew I wanted to go to university, but I didn't actually know why or, or what I was going to study. So I had really good uh, GCSE results, which led me to take maths, physics and chemistry. Initially, I was interested in being a forensic scientist, but I was really lucky. Um, while I was in the sixth form, I got invited to a week's Girls Into Engineering course, which was held at Oxford Brooks Uni. I attended the course and that was what I wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get the grades I needed in my A-levels, but I was lucky enough to be offered an access year um, at, the at the university of, um, that I wanted to attend. So rather than doing a three-year bachelor's degree, I actually did one year, which was doing a catch-up of all the stuff um, you needed to know from A-level before I moved on to the bachelor's course. Um, it wasn't actually until I got to university that I realised I was a little bit I don't know if odds the right word, special. Um, out of 200 on my course, there was actually only four girls. Um, and it was only really once I got to university that I realised what a male dominated area I was in. Now, this is going back to 1995, which is a very long time ago for some of you. Um, I studied uh, computer systems engineering, which covered both software, which is programming, and the hardware side, which is electronics. I graduated in 19, 1999. Um, over my career, I have worked for lots of different industries and lots of different companies. My first role, I worked for a company called Raytheon, which is a defence company. And I worked on the identification friend or foe project, which is basically when an aircraft sees another aircraft, is it going to shoot it or is it friendly? Um, which was quite an interesting project to work on. I then moved on to work for a telecoms company where I did electronics design and mentoring. I then spent a couple of years doing an applications engineer role, which basically meant supporting the electronics industry with devices that were being sold, helping customers with their design and traveling all over the country. 
Um, there's a little an animation here, which hopefully is working. So um, I spent 12 years working for a company called ABB, who do drives and controls. Um, in this picture, you can see the um, unit sort of in the middle. So I actually worked on the electronics cards within those. This sounds quite simple. It's just basically wrapping some bottles on the conveyor, but you wouldn't believe the amount of electronics that's actually gone into what looks like a fairly simple um, product, really. So that was quite interesting. Um, I also then worked in the rail industry um, for a company called Norbremse, which is a German company where I was actually working as the deputy electronics manager. Within that role, I did project requirements, project planning, designing circuit boards, which you can see there on the left hand side, uh, testing. The area I've specialised in is something called FPGA design um, and with it being a rail product it involved quite a lot of safety because when you're working on braking systems you actually want them to brake when they need to. Um, I then moved on to work for a company called Techworks which was a completely different role so this was um, bringing engineering companies together really to look at common problems in industry and I did an awful lot of work um, with STEM and working with schools to try to promote engineering positive environment. My current role, I am known as the embedded team lead, which is probably meaningless to most people. So I work for a radar and communications company now. So again, a lot of what I do is project planning, resource planning, circuit board design, looking at technologies. So what is a typical day? Um, no two days are the same is something I can definitely say within engineering. You work within cross-functional teams, so people from a mechanical background as well as a software background, electronics background, projects engineers um, to solve problems basically. So I'm given a set of requirements, whatever they may be. Um, hopefully they are actually defined maybe one day I will get to find requirements. That's an interesting thing about being an engineer. Um, so within a team, just working together really to solve the problem. Um, and as an engineer, you're, you've never finished learning because there's always something new coming along. So it's really, you learn for forever. Well, I certainly have at this point. Um, I attend a lot of conferences to obviously keep that, that knowledge up. Um, and one of the things I find most rewarding um, is actually doing things like this, which is just promoting what engineering is um, and how it can be a really, really rewarding career. Why do we actually need more females in engineering? Um, we hear about it a lot, that the statistics are quite low. Um, one of the, with things like AI, there was an interesting um, case recently where um, basically, a computer algorithm was developed to sort CVs, which sounds fairly trivial, but it was all white men in their 40s that designed this particular software tool. And basically what it did, it chucked out anyone's CV that wasn't 40 and male is the best way to describe it. So by working together with different opinions and different backgrounds is actually how we solve problems. By having 40 people in a room with the same opinion, that isn't actually going to be a very interesting conversation. Um, one of the things that I've done recently is the People Like Me training, where we're actually looking at female role models and actually trying to promote what we do. Um, we need more engineers full stop, be it male, be it female, or anywhere in between. Um, so actually, if we're not getting people from the female population to apply for engineering, then obviously our numbers are dramatically reduced as to people who's even trying to take engineering. And it's a very re rewarding career. Um, I think one of the things we don't do very well in engineering is actually look at it from a point of view of what we can achieve in the area of healthcare, for example, where you can solve problems um, and actually save people's lives. So as an engineer, it's not a boring stuffy job. Actually, we're, we're looking together to solve some of the major problems that we've got actually in the world. Why do I love my job? Um, it's very rewarding, it's very different. I do like making a difference um, by giving back to, to things like this and also 
um, in the industries I've worked in, I've solved some very um, interesting problems. The pay is quite good. That sounds quite a selfish thing, but obviously you need to know what area you're going to be working in and is it actually going to be rewarding. Um, I've never been out of work in my 23 year career. I get offers quite often. Um, I get approached quite often. Um, so there's always roles out there and actually that's, that's only increasing. Um, there's always new ideas and new technologies to, to learn. And actually, even though females actually don't make up the majority of the workplace, I can always say I have worked in friendly and inclusive places. And actually it's never been a problem that I have been the only female in the room. So how could you get more involved if you are interested in a career in engineering? Um, look around for local companies that could potentially offer you some work experience or through network through people like myself and, and Teddy London, we could definitely put you in contact with people that you could speak to on that. Um, the, the STEM ambassador organization where your school can request to have somebody like me or from a, a different area of engineering come in to talk to you um, and even do some hands-on workshops. There's lots of STEM events. The Big Bang Fair is really good. I've judged that for the last few years. Um, basically schools get together, submit a project. Open days uh, for universities uh, are always good places to find out. Also girls into engineering courses. Uh, there's quite a few of those around or just in general engineering courses. Um, I was lucky enough, I got interviewed for the newspaper a few years ago um, and it actually went on to We Are The City, just again, trying to talk about, you know, what a positive um, area of engineering is. Um, there's some more information here, which I've just really put in for more of um, information as to why choose engineering. You'll always, you're never going to be out of work. Um, the engineering apprentices tend to get a lot higher wages than the national average. And also when you graduate, people from an engineering degree tend to get about a 20% higher starting salary as well. Uh, routes into engineering. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't take a typical route after not getting the results I needed from the A-level. So I did an access year, but there's a lot of different ways um, that you can look at engineering now it doesn't have to just be in going to university you can do degree apprenticeships where you can get your degree as you study there's lots of different levels as technicians um, as well to consider um, tomorrow's engineer is a really good resource if you're looking for any information in, into how to get into engineering uh, this is quite an interesting slide one of the problems i've come across in a lot of the presenting i've done it's not actually that the, the, the girls, uh, females that I'm talking to aren't interested in engineering. It's the fact that parents don't understand what engineering is. Um, they think it's mechanics and it's dirty and it's not actually what it is. So this is quite a useful resource to talk to your parents about. Um, yeah, I probably spoke too quickly as I always do. Um, but yeah, if anyone's got any questions, that will be uh, really useful. Thank you very much for that, Lisa. Thank you. Really good. <laughs> and you didn't talk too fast either. That's great. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. That was super insightful. And honestly, all of the questions that I initially, before you started, I had in my head, you covered brilliantly at the end there with um, advice and access routes. So before um, before I jump in with anything, um, Amy joined us uh, during the session. Welcome, Amy. Thank you for coming along. Um, so Leticia and Amy, do you have any questions at all? If you do, feel free to either turn your microphone um, on and, and ask them out loud or pop them in the chat if you would rather not. Um, if you've not got any straight away, I can... I tell you, I, I'll ask one first and whilst Amy and Leticia are thinking, so you um, you touched at the end there on what parents think. Um, so what were your parents' reactions or like what was your family's reaction when you? Um, 
I don't think they had any idea what I was doing. Even after I graduated, my parents told people I fixed computers for a living because they vaguely knew there was something to do with circuit boards, um, which was quite interesting. After sort of four years after graduating, I would bump into my parents' friends and, oh, you fix computers? No, I really don't. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I'm always been quite a determined person so I didn't really need to convince my parents um that it was a a, a viable option but yeah I, I I don't think they understood what it was oh so we've got a question there from Letitia I hope I've said your name correctly everyone says my name wrong because it's spelt strangely but it is just <laughs> answer um so I didn't I can't, when I first went to university, I didn't really know what area of engineering I wanted to go into. Um, lots of different degree options. Um, there are lots of different degree options out there, sorry. So some will offer quite a general first year, which will include areas from say mechanical engineering, um, computer systems engineering, electronics, and then allow you to specialize after your first year. Um, I actually think that's a really good option anyway, because you may think you know what you want to do, but actually you've not really sampled anything into any great depth. Um, so I did my first year, um, which was very much a computer science and electronics merged into one. Um, and after that first year, I decided I hated the computer science side. Actually, hate's probably a bit strong. Didn't enjoy that side of it so much. It was the electronics and actually getting hands on with the circuit board. So I then took my um, options in my second and third year to include more of that side of the courses rather than the sort of pure programming sides. Um, Thank you. So another question has come in just here. So I'll read it out just for the recording here. Uh, what advice would you give for someone stuck between choosing to study engineering or physics? Um, interestingly enough, I, I've had a, um, we're currently recruiting for the, the place where I work for a level six um, apprentice, which is somebody who will spend one day a week at um, college university and then four days a week with us working. Um, and I was actually having a, an interview with somebody who, who was basically in that exact position. Um, I think engineering is such a wide area that you can go into. Um, I don't know that much about what you do with physics, um, to be perfectly honest. Obviously, I've studied A-level physics and areas of my degree had physics. Um, my advice to if, if you're really not sure which area to go in, engineering just gives you so many options. And obviously the other advice would be to find somebody who's, who works in the area of physics who can give you that alternative view. Um, but yeah, it was, very, it was very clear to me that I could do pretty much whatever I wanted. Um, and not just a case of what job I was having, but what area I was going into. Um, a friend of mine is very much into um, changing the world sounds a bit corny, but making a difference in, in that respect. So she's gone into healthcare as an engineer and, and working in neonatal area of engineering, which it, to me is quite frightening that, you know, anyone would be doing things that, that in depth. Um, but yeah, that, that sort of, in a roundabout way, that would be my advice to look at engineering because it's such a wide area um mm -hmm. but conversely I would speak to somebody who's working in the area of physics to sort of say what what job and, and look at what job roles you could potentially get in physics because job roles in engineering are so varied brilliant thank you it really is in every corner of life isn't it even in the neonatal department uh when yeah. I didn't quite imagine. I was recently um, at a um, MPL conference, um, and basically they were talking about scanners for people with um, diabetes to actually scan people's feet to see if they have the potential to obviously develop an abscess and, and lose their foot. 
um, and they've managed to change this very basic scanner that you can get in boots that would basically look at somebody's foot and tell you if they were, they have the potential to lose their foot, which is, is just astounding. Wow. Wow, it is. Um, another question come in. Was there an entrance test or interview you had to do to uh, to 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 do engineering in university? Yeah. So when I was initially applying to universities, when I wasn't aware that my grades weren't going to be uh, good enough, um, it was an interview. Um, and then based on that interview, they would give you an offer of, of what grades they required for you to to get into the course. Um, each university obviously do things slightly differently. Um, so if you're looking around at universities, it, it's a really good option to look at ones that accept varying grades, um, have a favourite and then obviously have a backup choice that's maybe not quite as, as high as, as one of the other universities. Um, yeah. Great. And is it possible to do a degree in physics and still have a career in engineering? Definitely. I know quite a few now engineers whose background is in physics. So I, I don't think you need to necessarily make that decision at university as to what area you, you're going to take. Um, I know lots of people who their first degree is not in engineering um, and they are very, very bright engineers and, and probably far better than people like me. Mm. So thinking about this is a question from me, it's something that I often ask myself. Um, so looking back on your time at university, thinking more generally, so rather than just subjects, what would you tell someone searching for university? What are the key things that you would look for that you think are going to really influence whether you'll enjoy your time there? Yeah, so it's once you've decided on what sort of course you want to do, then it's really looking at the environment. So what's the campus like is, is quite important. Do you want a green campus or do you want a city university? Um, and again, coming at it from a female perspective, it would have been great if I'd had some lecturers at university, even one that was female or other members of the female cohort that, you know, you could have asked questions because it can be quite intimidating to walk into a room full of men being the only female there. So again, look at, I would look at statistics to see typically year on year, is there a co cohort of, fe of female engineers? Um, if there isn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that's not the university for you, but again, to look at um, what forms of mentoring that can be offered and, there's various schemes out there now, actually, where industry can mentor, uni mentor, mentor, mentor <laughs> university students as well. Um, so there's, there's so many things to think about. Cost is another one. What area of the country you, you're studying in? Are you looking to potentially live at home and go to university? Um, personally, I think there's a lot more choice out there from when I went to university. Um, but yeah, if I could go back again and realise that I was going to be um, it, very much in the in the minority. Um, it, it, it would have been something I might have considered looking at. Lisa, can I ask you on, um, you mentioned a bit about apprenticeships. Of course, Teddy London has, the, the programme is predominantly project-based. How much through university or as you're going towards it and everything else, how much do you, how important do you think that hands-on doing things, engaging with things, how much of a part does it play, do you think, in helping you decide, helping you feel comfortable with the area you're going into? Does it, do you, do you feel it matters too much? Did you have it in your degree? Would you like to have had it? Definitely. Some, the, there was some project work, um, but it was really when you got into your final year, um, and then your final year project was something you did on your own. Um, and students that are graduates that I've taken on that's either done a placement year and actually worked within a company has always been head and shoulders above even, you know, first class degree students who have no concept of how to work with it, work with others. So again, looking at degree content um, to see how much project 
work project based um, areas there are, I think would be really important. Um, again, if that's not something that your university is offering to look at summer placements where you could get into a company and just you spend a long time at university, but it's not the same as, as, as being in a workplace. So to get any workplace experience, I think is really important. Fantastic. I've got um, probably two more questions, but I'll open the floor back up to Amy and Leticia. Do you have any more questions that, that you'd like to pop in the chat? And whilst you're, whilst you're thinking, and then we'll, we'll probably wrap up shortly. So um, you've touched on obviously being in the minority within your, within your course and also in your workplace. And it's definitely a conversation that we're having about Teddy London, about diversifying engineering and getting more girls um into the industry is it a conversation that you have in the workplace and what do you think the engineering industry is doing to to open it up more widely to women and, and girls i think i i'm very lucky i've only had a couple of negative experiences and that was down to individuals as opposed to you know a, a company ethos or, or and, and you'll you'll meet that in whatever area of life you go into there will always be people out there who, who aren't that nice <laughs> so um I think the industry is trying I am wary of groups of women sitting and discussing the problem because that's not gonna solve the problem on the whole um most engi male engineers I speak to would love to have more females around because it just creates a, a different working environment um I think it's getting better in some areas. Mechanical engineering does seem to be having um, quite an improvement. The area I've worked in, in the area of electronics, I have been the only female engineer in any company I've ever, I've ever worked at. Um, so I think we're, we're having the conversations, but how, I, I think the only way we solve the problem is to start solving the perception of engineering and I don't actually think it's necessarily it's a female and it's a male thing. I think the population at large just don't understand what the term engineer is. So when you're considering your options, if you like math and you like science, how do you how do you choose engineering when you don't actually know what it is? And most teachers don't know what it is. So um, I think it needs to be part of the curriculum and brought in a lot earlier. Um, it's quite boggling to me that A-level physics can be taught, um, their electronic sections are only taught theoretically on a board rather than actually with a proper circuit board um, and the same with with computing. I think computing is getting better. My, my daughter's 14, um, she's doing Python at school now so I think in some ways it's getting better um, but the curriculum just needs an overhaul is the, the way to solve it really. Thank you. And another question's come in. Uh, how much practical work versus theory work was there at uni? Um, so I suppose we should probably say this is going to be your experience, not of all <laughs> universities. Um, but yeah, how much practical work versus theory work was there? And how much did your physics and maths A-levels apply to the course? Um, surprisingly, quite a lot from the phys physics and, and maths side. Um, it makes more sense when you you use it in practice as opposed to why on earth am I learning all these equations and how to be applied to um, real life. The practical versus theory, um, it, that would really vary from university to university and the question earlier of, of looking at how you choose universities, I think that's a really valid question. Um, I would say probably my experience was maybe 70% theory, 30% practical. Um, but that really would vary from, from course to course. Brilliant. Um, well then, to, to close, just a little closing question. Um, so Lisa, you're obviously involved with Teddy London and you know about our mission to diversify engineering and to broaden it to a new type of student. So what do you think it is that we're doing at Teddy London to create the new type of future engineer? I think it's looking at it from a different perspective and actually looking at it from solving problems as opposed to the, the maths and the physics and, and that side of it. Obviously, you do need 
to have a level of, of those subjects, but actually they maybe don't need to be the level that some universities actually require. Um, and for example, the, my husband's an electrician. He did horrendously at school, but when he, he can now do maths problems because he solves it, he, he applies it to real life as, as it opposed being, you know, a boring, let's sit here and learn this equation. Um, so yeah, it, it's learning how to apply that knowledge. And I think there's so many more people out there. If you explain why they're learning something um, and how you use it to solve a problem, I, I think that that's, that's to me the winning solution. I personally struggled at university in courses that I couldn't see how they applied. Um, and I, I think that's just such an important um, thing really. Fabulous. Thank you very much.